Over the next few lectures, I'm going to show you how to create your own keyword spotting or voice recognition system. I encourage you to follow along with your own smartphone or Arduino board. To create our data set, we're going to start with a pre-existing set of keywords. This is Google's Speech Commands data set and contains a few dozen words, each with thousands of samples. Starting with a third-party data set can be a great way to learn about machine learning or augment your own data set to help create a more robust model. In this demo, I'm going to show you how you can add your own custom keyword into the mix. We're going to run a custom data set curation Python script that will pull in all these files, shuffle them, and mix in some background noise. The Google Speech Commands data set comes with six samples of background noise that we can use, but feel free to collect your own depending on your target environment. This might be traffic, a crowded hallway, an office, and so on. The script will then outline a set of curated audio files that will make training our classifier much easier. In a keyword spotting system, we want the classifier to identify one or only a few words out of all possible words. Note that getting high reliability and accuracy is quite difficult, so don't expect Alexa-level keyword spotting for this demo. We need to divide up the dataset into our categories. We don't have space on our microcontroller for a neural network capable of classifying all possible words, so we curate the data set to create three categories. The first is a series of background noise clips, which constitutes the noise class. Next is the unknown category. This is all the words that are not our target keyword or words. Finally, we have our keywords. These are the words we want our system to trigger on. You'll often see this being just one word, but I'm going to show you how to do it with two. Feel free to extrapolate to three or more to see if that works. With this curate list, our system should be able to continuously listen and classify each second of audio as one of these labels. Data augmentation is a common technique in machine learning where we can multiply the usefulness of each sample. Samples are modified in various ways to produce several versions of that one sample. For example, let's take this one sample from the Google Speech Commands dataset. It's an example of someone saying the word stop. If we mix in a random snippet of background noise, we've effectively created a new sample. We can repeat this process for different background noises. If we have six different background noises, we could effectively create six new samples out of the one original sample, thereby multiplying our sample set. It's not as good as collecting real samples in the actual target environment, but it can help when we don't have a lot of data to start with. For audio, you can also try moving where the spoken word appears in the frame, changing the volume, or changing the pitch. All of these are viable forms of data augmentation. For now, we're just going to stick with basic mixing in of background noise. Edge Impulse does have a tool that lets you mix in random bits of background noise for data augmentation, but I wanted to show you how you can do it manually if you wanted more control over what kinds of background noise to use. Note that you want all of the samples in the data set to be the exact same sample rate, bit depth, and length. For example, this one second sample at 16 kilohertz and 16 bits is exactly 16,000 samples that are 16 bits each. All of the samples in our data set need to be 16,000 samples of audio data and 16 bits. If not, our features will not be the same dimensions and it will not feed correctly into the neural network. The curation script will take care of automatically adjusting the sample rate, bit depth, and length so that everything matches. If a sample is too long, it will remove everything after one second. And if it's too short, it will pad the sample with zeros until it equals one second. The script also upsamples or downsamples as necessary and adjusts the bit depth to make sure it all matches. If the script does not catch it, then the edge impulse will perform the same steps to ensure all the samples match. Head to github.com slash seanhemel slash EI keyword spotting. This is where I keep my custom curation script and some embedded demos for keyword spotting. You're welcome to run it locally, but rather than setting up Python and all the needed packages, we're going to run it in the Google Colab environment. Scroll down and find the Open in Colab button. Click it and you should be taken to Google Colab. Note that you will need a free Gmail account to run this script, so create one if you don't already have one. Here, you will want to read through the instructions and press Shift-Enter to run each cell. The first two cells are just text describing how to use the script. The first cell with code installs the Node Package Manager in Colab. Colab isn't just a Jupyter Notebook instance. It's also running Linux in the background, so we can somewhat treat it like a full computer. If asked, click Run Anyway. When that's done, press Shift-Enter on the next cell to install the Sound File Package and the Edge Impulse CLI tool.
In the next cell, feel free to look through the settings. You'll see that we are downloading version 0.02 of the Google Speech Commands dataset. We're also aiming to have 1,500 samples in each of our curated classes, where each sample is one second long with a sample rate of 16 kilohertz and a bit depth of 16 bits. You can adjust the relative spoken word and background noise volumes by changing these numbers. We'll need to manually extract the background noise directory that comes with the Google Speech Commands dataset, as we don't want those samples being treated like spoken words. Finally, this Jupyter Notebook script will automatically split the curated list into a training set and a test set before uploading it to our Edge Impulse project. Run this cell and the one after it to begin downloading the Google Speech Commands dataset. This will take a few minutes. When it's done, click on the folder icon on the left side of the screen. This will let you browse the files on the Colab Linux virtual machine. If you go up a folder, you should see all the usual Linux directories. Our workspace is the content directory, so let's go back there. Take a look inside the Google Speech Commands dataset, and you'll find a bunch of different directories, each containing thousands of samples of a spoken word. You're welcome to download one and play it. It's just a WAV file. You can see that the background noise folder is still in here, so let's run the next cell to move that out. Refresh the file browser to see that the background noise folder is now at the same level as our speech commands folder. The next cell allows you to pull in your own data set from some place like GitHub if you'd like. This is for my personal projects as I keep custom keywords on GitHub. Feel free to skip this step for now. In the next cell, you'll find some variables that we need to change. First, we need to create our custom keyword sample set. Ideally, you'll want a variety of voices, accents, ages, and genders to create a more unbiased data set. For now, your own voice will work, but know that the model you create may not work with other people's voices. I'll choose hello as my keyword. Start a recording app or program on your phone or computer and say the word at least 50 times, leaving a good amount of space between each utterance. Hello. Hello, 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 hello. Transfer the recording to your computer and open it with an editing program like Audacity. Highlight one of the utterances. I like to use the selection tool at the bottom to make sure it's exactly one second, but that's not completely necessary so long as your word is within that one second frame. Select File, Export, Export Selected Audio. Save it as a signed 16-bit PCM WAV file on your computer somewhere. Give it any name you want, but no, it really doesn't matter. The curation script gives new names to the output files anyway. Continue this process for all of the utterances in the file. I like to play some of them to make sure the microphone did pick up the correct word. Hello. I also try to vary when the utterance occurs in the frame. This helps create a more robust model so that the model doesn't always expect the word to appear at one spot, like at 0.5 seconds. When you're done, return to Colab. Right-click on the content directory and select New Folder. Give this folder a name like Custom Keywords. Right-click on that folder and select New Folder again. Right-click on this folder and rename it to your label. Note that the naming here is important. The name of the folder should be the class label and it must line up with one of the target names that we'll set in a minute. Right-click on that new folder and select Upload. Select all of your exported samples and click Open. After a moment, those WAV files should appear in Colab. Right-click on the custom keywords folder and select copy path. Paste that path in between the quotation marks for the custom dataset path variable. This will tell the script to look in the custom keywords directory for our newly added keywords. You can add more custom classes under that custom keywords folder if you'd like to try more than just one. Make sure the directory structure stays the same as this hello folder. Next, we need our Edge Impulse API key. Head to Edge Impulse and log into your account. Create a new project and give it some memorable name. Click on that project and you should be brought to the dashboard. Click on the Keys tab and you should find your API key. Double click on that key and copy it. Note that even though it looks like it's truncated when you copy it, it will contain the full key. Head back to Colab and paste your key in the EI API key variable between the quotation marks. Finally, for targets, change the words to your desired keywords. They need to be separated by a comma. Note that they must come from either the Google Speech Commands dataset or your custom keywords dataset. You can't make up a keyword that's not available in either of those sets here. So I'll go with hello, as that's our custom keyword, and stop from the Google set. You're welcome to try a different number of keywords. 
One should work well, and I've gotten three and four to work on the Nano 33 BLE Sense. Remember that as you add keywords, you must add output nodes in the neural network. You may also need to change the size and shape of the model to account for small variances in similar sounding words. At some point, the model will become too large or take too long to run on the target board. So you'll need to be mindful of that if you want to have lots of target keywords. Run that cell and the one after it. This will download the curation script from my GitHub repository. Then run the curation script cell, which will run the actual curation script. This may take 20 or 30 minutes, so be patient. Feel free to look at the source code of the script to see what the different parameters do and how it performs the mixing. Check the output to make sure no errors occurred and then run the final cell. If you look in the content folder, you should see the keywords curated folder with the actual samples to be sent to Edge Impulse. Once again, these are simple WAV files. You should be able to download any of them and play them to verify that the mixing worked. The final cell uses the Edge Impulse CLI tool to upload everything in the keywords curated directory to our Edge Impulse project. Run it and it will handle all of that automatically for us. Note that it also randomly splits the data set into separate training and test sets. The label for each sample is inferred from the name of the directory that it's in. When uploading is done, head to your Edge Impulse project. Go to Data Acquisition. You should see close to 4,800 samples in your training set, and it should be fairly evenly split among the four classes. Go to the Test Data tab, and you should see another 1,200 samples that are also evenly split among the classes. If you used something other than four classes, the number of samples uploaded will be different. Now that our data set is ready to go, we're ready for feature extraction.